welcome to Midas 101 with Jim Rose. Today we are going to show you the proper way to network two Midas consoles together. Uh, it, it's pretty simple to make them talk. You might want to use the built-in I.O. on this Pro 1 to feed inputs to this Pro 2C. You might have a Pro 2C that has a DL251 input rack that you need to use that input rack to feed two consoles. Uh, there's all kinds of reasons why you would want to network the two together. And in order to do it, you need to make sure that you have the proper master-slave configuration between the two. You have the proper uh, clock source and that the consoles are seeing each other in the proper clock domain. Pretty simple thing to do. Right now what we have is two Ethercons plugged into ports 1 and 2 in the back of this. The AES50 ports in the back of this console we're utilizing this Ethercon too. What we're going to do is we're going to plug it into the back of this Pro 1 in its ports 1 and 2 also. Okay, so now what we have is we have two consoles that are connected via Cat5, but they don't really know each other exist at this point, right? I mean, there's, there's nothing showing up here, and if we go to this console, there's nothing showing up. If you're going to network the consoles together, all that's passing through that stream of AES50 is audio data. There is no control data between these consoles, so they're going to see each other as a generic AES50 device. So when we go into the configuration page, what we want to do is take the ports that are connected between the consoles, and we want to set them up as generic AES50. We'll do that to both of these ports on this console. So now ports 1 and 2 are set for generic AES50, and as you can see we've got errors. They're still red. And we'll do the same thing on this console here. We're going to go to config and we're going to take port 1 and we're going to change that to a generic AES50. And we're going to take port 2 and we're going to change that to a generic AES50. In this situation we're going to consider the Pro 2C as the master. And let's just say this is the one that another external I.O. box is hooked to and we just chose this one to be the master console. Once we've chosen which one is going to be the master for our system, when we go into our preferences and our configuration, we need to pick and choose what's going to happen. And on this console, it's using its primary and secondary word clocks as the internal front of house word clocks in this console. It's in sync with itself and it's the master of the system. If we come to the second console, right now, what we have is it's looking at itself. Right now, they don't know that they're supposed to be in the same world because this console here is looking at itself for its clocking. So what we need to, the next thing we need to do is we need to choose this console to pull its clock from this console. In order to do that, we need to do it through communication. And what we have is we have two ports that are connected between the two. The primary and secondary sources all need to come from the master to the slave. It can't be an internal front of house word clock on this console and a pass from that on the other between these two because if they're in a master or slave configuration wrong that will fail. So what we want to do now is we want to take this console and we want to choose its clock sources as ports 1 and 2. We really only need the first one and it's an automatic choosing method but now what's happening is this console here is now clocking from this console. But it's also telling us that it has a problem. See how it's red here? It's still not seeing uh, it's still not seeing things properly because it doesn't know that it's supposed to be looking for this to be the clock in that situation for them to talk correctly. So what we do is we put this console into slave mode and now what we've done the light has turned green and they're back into sync and what's happened now is now we have green generic AES50 communication with the audio data this console is now clocking from this console and it knows it's supposed to and on this console, it sees a device that is clocked from it that it's okay with. So now what we have is we have ports between these two that if we go to our patching page on both of these consoles now, you'll see that we have 48 channels of communications down port 1 and 2 that we've patched in there, and we have
48 channels of communication on here. Now we have a 48 channel stream between these two consoles that we can do whatever we want. We can send from our I.O. on this console or from our Surface I.O. on this console down an AES-50 stream to that console. If we had a 251 plugged in, we can send it down those streams to that console also. On this console, we could take the Surface I.O. on this side and we could bus it back to the other console. Now they've become one unit and through this Cat5 stream that we set up, we have 48 channels of bi-directional communication clocked properly and working in sync with each other. Thanks.